Good morning, BGB subscribers. Happy Saturday. I hope your Saturday morning cleaning is going well. And if you're still in the bed, that's okay because it might not be a bones day. Besides, it's the end of the month. Halloween is tomorrow and we're still in a Panera Bread. Good morning, BGB friends. If you want to join the BGB community, you can subscribe to the BGB newsletter and the podcast. It's the fourth quarter of 2021 and you do not want to miss the upcoming content. Now, today we are talking about the most common question that I get, which is, how do I start budgeting? You guys, this question is so common. I see this in my comments on TikTok and my my Instagram and my emails and in my DMs. How do I get started budgeting? Another common question I get is, how are you so disciplined, Nikki? And, you know, people tend to overthink budgeting and finances just in general, so much so that it becomes paralyzing. We have the ability to overthink or overanalyze and create all these wild scenarios of what will happen if we start doing a particular thing. And in this case, it's budgeting. That paralysis causes us to, quote, eyeball it, as someone said on one of my TikTok videos. They eyeball their budget, but they aren't actively using their budget as a tool. And that's exactly what it is. When people ask me, how do I start and how am I so disciplined? The answers for both of these are pretty much the same, but oddly enough, the answers are not always satisfying for some people. Some people want intense answers or stereotypical sob stories, and baby, I I cannot give you that. What I can offer are some tips that help me start and become become disciplined. I'll give you five tips today that create the foundation of getting started, following through, and becoming disciplined. Now, do not go out and print all of your bank statements and buy highlighters because some of these tips start before you even open a bank app, create a cash envelope, or invest in random cryptocurrency. (laughs) No no shade to Bitcoin, Shiba Inu, Ethereum, everybody else. (laughs) Now, people ask me about budgeting. The first question I always ask them is, what are your goals? And to my surprise, um, I don't really have any. It's a common response. Some people will respond with big picture goals, like I want to be a millionaire. I want to pay cash for a car. I want to pay off all my student loans. And there is nothing wrong with those goals. They're so big, though, that when budgeting gets challenging, they might not seem reachable in the moment. And that can cause you to fall off the budgeting bandwagon. So here is my first tip. And I want you all to be honest and have fun with this tip. Create your big picture. What do you want your life to look like in five years? And I say five years because relatively speaking, that is not a lot of time. Five years ago, I wasn't even a lawyer. Five years ago, I didn't even have an emergency fund. But there is so much you can accomplish in five years and still not feel like you're at your desired lifestyle. And that's okay. We're working our way up to it. Now, this tip might sound boring, but it is the most fun you can have when preparing yourself for future goals. This is your time to be creative. Think outside the box. Pour all of your dreams and visions onto a sheet of paper and ignore all of your fears. This is the moment to be transparent with yourself. If you woke up every day as the main character in your life and you were so in love with every aspect in your life, what would it look like? Do you travel? Go out to eat? Do you have a cleaning service stop by the house twice a week? Do you even have a house? Do you buy stuff without looking at the price tag? This may be a great opportunity for you to decide if you need or want to rebrand your life. So go listen to episode six of the podcast. It's literally titled Rebranding Your Life. (laughs) Now, you can write this down, type it out or draw it, but you need to have it somewhere accessible to you. When budgeting gets challenging, and it will, you need something to look forward to, something that reminds you of why you're doing what you're doing. Now, this might result in you creating a vision board you don't have to wait until January to create a vision board. You create one in July, you can create one in November, but you wanna make sure it is something that you can go to and look at that reminds you of your big picture. For me, I do not want to owe anyone anything. Every time I think about it, I get so annoyed that I owe companies money, my mortgage, my student loans, et cetera. Like zero out of 10, do not recommend. I remember how I almost couldn't buy my house because of my student loan debt. And during the home buying process, a representative for a mortgage lender asked asked if my parents could gift me $10,000 toward the house. 
Don't worry, we all had a great laugh about it. And during the home buying process, I decided that I did not want my niece and nephews to go through these same financial obstacles. So big picture, I don't wanna owe anyone. And I want my family to have financial security and financial freedom. I know that I need to get my own finances together in order to make sure my family has financial security and financial stability. So that takes us to our second tip. Once you create your big picture, you have to take a few minutes, days or weeks, depending on how long you need, to make the executive decision that no matter what happens in your life, your priority is big picture. And it doesn't matter who tries to judge you or shame you, who invites you on vacation two days before departure, or which celebrity drops a new fashion line, your goal is big picture and you are going to accomplish it. Now, a lot of people skip this part. They think they should just start. But budgeting and becoming financially stable and financially free are a mindset more than anything else. When you make the executive decision that you are going to accomplish big picture, you are creating a mindset in which big picture is possible. If you don't think it's possible, then it's not possible. But if you can think it and envision it, it is possible. And this step requires you to intentionally decide that you are going to do what you set out to do. Now for step three, this one is a little more technical. You need to set goals for the next 30 days, 90 days, six months, one year, two years, and four years. These goals need to be something that will get you closer to that five-year big picture. Before I could do anything for my family, like I said, I knew I needed to get my finances in order. So I started with 30 days. In my 30 days, I needed an emergency fund. No matter how small it was, I desperately needed one. Yeah, I did not have a single, I didn't even have an account for my emergency fund five years ago. In 90 days, I needed to increase my emergency fund, pay off my $600 cell phone that was well-deserving. We'll circle back to that at some other point. And I wanted to start paying off the $500 balance on my New York and Company credit card that my parents told me not to get. In six months, I wanted $1,000 in my emergency fund. I wanted my New York and Company credit card paid completely off. And I wanted my $1,700 Walmart credit card paid off. In a year, I wanted $10,000 saved for a down payment on a house, and I wanted my credit score to increase. These were the goals that helped me start budgeting because they were the stepping stones to my big picture. And everything I did, I kept those goals in the forefront of my mind, and they helped me become disciplined. If there was an expense or event that would slow down my progress, I didn't buy it or I didn't go. There is literally nothing more important than my big picture. The most important part you need to remember about breaking down your big picture and creating goals is to make them reasonable and attainable. Start with small goals. And as you flex that discipline muscle, increase your goals little by little. Now, before we get into the last two tips, let's take a commercial break. Getting started can be challenging when you're absolutely new to budgeting and you realize there is so much you need to learn. In an effort to provide some foundational approaches and definitions, I created Budget Basics, an e-guide to the basics of budgeting made specifically for you. This e-guide asks you important questions that will help you create the foundation you need to start your wealth journey. Budget Basics will explain the purpose of budgeting, how to get started, the importance of your why, the different kinds of budgets, and so much more. Grab your copy of Budget Basics from the Black Girl Budget website and get started on your journey today. Make sure you subscribe to the BGB newsletter and the BGB podcast to receive updates and direct access to upcoming content. Now, tip four is a two-parter, but we're going to start with creating a budget using the zero-based budget method. Now, there are a lot of different types of budgets that you can use, and I want you to use the one that benefits you the most. I personally use the zero-based budget method and highly recommend it. This kind of budgeting lets you tell every single dollar and every penny where to go. You start this budget by writing down your monthly income. That includes your salary, tips, bonuses, et cetera. Write it all down. Then write down all of your bills and expenses your car note, your insurance, your spending money, everything. Now do a little math. Grab that calculator, sis. Do a little math. Are your monthly expenses and bills 
more or less than your monthly income. So let's go through it. If your expenses are more than your monthly income, you either need to cut something out of your budget or increase your income. I won't get too deep into this point today because it has all kinds of nuances and a hint of privilege and classism. So we'll circle back in an episode later. If your monthly expenses are less than your monthly income, it's the leftover money that will allow you to reach your financial goals. For example, if you subtract your monthly expenses from your monthly income, and you have $300 left over, that $300 is going to be the money that gets you to paying off debt, that helps you save money, that allows you to invest. So here's the second part of this tip. The first thing you need to focus on is your emergency fund. I cannot stress this enough. If you do not have an emergency fund, you are living a dangerous lifestyle, very dangerous. Your emergency, your emergency fund is at the forefront of your finances. It is your get out of jail free card. It is your lifeline, your buffer between you and more debt. So for example, if you have that $300 left over, your number one goal is to create that emergency fund. Start with $300 because that's what you have left over every month and then hit $500 and then shoot for a thousand and then shoot for one month's worth of expenses. But I am telling y'all, you need an emergency fund. If you don't have one, you are more likely to use your credit cards. You are more likely to borrow money from someone or you're more likely to open up a personal loan. And we are trying to get away from debt. Now, for your emergency fund, you must define what it is. Like, what are we using this for? What is it? And I know it sounds obvious, like we're going to use it for emergencies because that's what it's called. But let me tell y'all, everyone doesn't think like that. And that's okay because we're learning and growing together. So while it may sound obvious, you have to commit to your emergency fund being strictly for emergencies. You need to separate your emergency fund from your checking account. They should not be coexisting in the same account. You are more likely to spend that money if it is connected to the account that you make daily purchases out of. Your emergency fund is also not for investing. The whole purpose of, of this fund is to have access to it immediately during emergencies. So when I say define your emergency fund, you really got to narrow down what you're using it for and what and decide what you're not using it for. We're not going to invest it. We're not going to use it to spend on a trip that came up last minute with our friends. We're not going to use it to restock our wardrobe or to invest in property. It is strictly for emergencies. Your engine went out, emergency. You live in Florida and your AC went out, emergency. You live in Canada and your heater went out, emergency. These are emergencies that we're going to use our emergency fund for. Now, the last tip that I have for you all today I'm not going to say that it is the most important, but it is as equally as important as everything else we've talked about today. So you must have a support team. This is one or more people, you know, who will support you and be happy for your accomplishments. Now, I'm going to say this again, because sometimes we think our support team is going to be the people we talk to the most, but they might not be the people who will support us and be happy for us. So this is one or more people, you know who will support you and be happy for your accomplishments. This person or team of people should be able to encourage you, love on you when it gets challenging because it will, and even provide some sound advice when you need it. Now, they don't need to provide you investing advice like they've been doing it for the last 50 years, but if you're not sure if you want to pay off your car or max out your IRA, perhaps they can provide a little piece of information that'll help you sway one way or the other. Now, most importantly, you need to be able to celebrate your accomplishments with your support team, no matter how small the accomplishment is. You opened a high yield savings account, you're getting emojis and gifts of Kermit the Frog screaming in excitement for the next five minutes. You paid off a large debt, we're grabbing celebratory brunch, excuse me, we're grabbing celebratory brunch and drinks. We can just do brunch, but y'all know I'm going to add my drinks on there. Now, my team consists of my parents, my best friend, my partner, and my mentors. 
I can call or text them at any time to talk about my finances or their finances. So while your team is created to support you, remember to be equally supportive of your team's accomplishments. If one of your team members hits you up and says, oh my gosh, girl, I just paid off my car. You are sending emojis for the next five minutes. You are taking them out to celebrate on a budget-friendly kind of meal. You want to give support and receive support equally because you will also be encouraged by their accomplishments and you will also learn from their accomplishments. So make sure this is a two-way street between you and your team. These are the five tips that have helped me so much in the last five years that I have been able to create an emergency fund with over $10,000. I've paid off my car after having it for a year and a half. I've purchased a home with my down payment. I even refinanced my home because remember, I almost couldn't buy it. My parents had to co-sign for my house and I was able to refinance and get them off of the loan as co-signers. So now it's just me. I paid off my credit card debt. I even maxed out my IRA and began investing. So put these tips to work today and watch your finances change for the better. You will thank yourself 30 days from now, six months from now, two years from now. Let me know if you're already using some of these tips or if you've started using your Budget Basics e-guide by leaving a comment. If you find this episode helpful, like it and share it with a friend. Make sure you become a BGB subscriber and subscribe to the newsletter and the podcast so you're updated when new episodes and content drop. Happy budgeting.